In a world where Bob Iger has many thorns in his side, there's an argument to be made that activist investor Nelson Peltz and his compatriot and former Disney executive Ike Perlmutter are the biggest ones. While Disney's charisma king Bob Iger dodged taking any question from cast members at a recent company town hall, Bob Iger was not able to dodge Andrew Ross Sorkin at the New York Times Deal Book Summit. Let's talk about that on That Park Place. Here in part six of our Breaking Bob series, we're going through recent statements by Bob Iger, the CEO of the Walt Disney Company, right before Elon Musk made his own controversial statements about Bob Iger. This time, the subject is Nelson Peltz, Ike Perlmutter, and just how much Bob Iger's current erratic behavior is determined by trying to avoid the question of Bob Iger's ability to fix the problems he's created for himself. Let's get to it. How, how much is saying all this publicly before having a deal is about staving off the activists you know by the way that shot's fired right there uh and this is a great question from sorkin yeah. uh he wants yeah. to know if this is being done specifically because of nelson peltz and trying to shut nelson peltz up a yeah. value act in this business no, uh, activists is totally irrelevant in this regard okay how about nelson peltz by, by the way what were we what well as it relates to sports well as it relates to putting all of these businesses effectively either up for sale or saying look we're thinking about everything so that when Nelson Peltz and Ike Perlmutter... We haven't put any of them up for sale. But Okay, well, that's an interesting statement, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we'll go back to uh, the CNBC. We'll, we'll talk about the CNBC article, uh, interview here um, where Bob Iger, knowing that he was in the presence of so many deal makers and so many people with large pockets, he starts to say, oh, well, maybe uh, maybe ABC is not core. Maybe ESPN is not core. Maybe yeah. some of our other assets are not core. Um, that is like a pretty woman going into the bar and saying, I am in a rough relationship. Things are going pretty bad. I, I, I just, uh, she's fanning herself and she's saying, oh, I do declare. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is this is so ridiculous. And to me, me with a idea. finger that still doesn't have a diamond ring on it. My goodness me, gentlemen, what shall I do? <laughs> Fiddle dee dee. And, and I'll also point out that uh, multiple outlets said they were in talks with uh, the Disney company about uh, the purchase of ABC or Freeform right. or all of the F extra FX channels, all while Charter is saying, by the way, those channels, we don't want those channels. Uh, so, which, which is just like what I said about when they announced that, uh, oh, Robert Downey isn't coming back after all. The answer is they wouldn't pay him enough money and they wouldn't give him enough control over the script and over who directed it. Yeah. Uh, and, and depending if we've got the time today, I would love to talk about that. I've got the articles uh, queued up here. I, all I'm saying is there's a reason behind things that doesn't come out in the announcements. Uh, uh, somebody did a story here somewhere about, uh, well, we told uh, Star Wars. Oh, pardon me. It was it was pros uh, talk the other day with um, the lady from, uh, uh, what's it called? I'm sorry. And a Force of Light Entertainment? Force, Force of Light, Light Michelle. Yeah. When, they, yeah. when, she, when she talked about, well... Um, they said that uh, Lucas wanted to do it for X dollars, but Disney told him back, no, no, you got to do it for this amount that was less. And I said, how do we know that whole statement wasn't a manufactured thing? Because Lucas and Disney is the same people. And if they announce, well, see, we're cutting back, Nelson Peltz. We're not just giving them a blank check anymore. Honest, look, here's proof. Mm -hmm. It's all for public consumption as an answer to Peltz and Perlmo to say, well, we're making the reforms we said we would. We're cutting back on the expenses. Look, here's proof. We told our own people we won't spend so much money anymore. Good Doesn't point. mean they won't do it. It just means they put it out there. Just so, waiting for that latest Carolyn Reed report about the so, Marvels. So when you see all these announcements, ladies and gentlemen, um, there's a game behind the <laughs> game going on, and it ain't necessarily so. That's and all Iger knows how to play that game better than anybody. That's yes, sure. he, does. he has it, so far, but the man behind the curtain is getting visible a little bit. Mm, and, and, and I'll also point out that uh, we, you all need to be paying attention to Caroline Reed specifically over at Forbes. She's she's got some big things that'll be coming out in the uh, in, in, hopefully in uh, in the near future. One of the things you've said is we're looking at an option for getting a minority investment here. We might be willing to sell the linear channels here. We might be. How much of this when you when you went public with that? Did you know that Nelson Peltz was this? The, the, he's asking the perfect question here because he is accusing yeah. Bob Iger of understanding the the consequences of his words 
will be will be understood uh, by the people who are paying attention, not on ABC, not on, you know, Jimmy Fallon, but on CNBC, a business channel. And Sorkin knows the real answer here, by the way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sorkin did a great job. I I can't say that enough. Yeah, it's coming. I knew that he was potentially interested in uh, in requesting a board seat again. But uh, what I said in that interview in July, I, I, he was not on my mind at all. It, False. It was nothing, He's now in your mind. It was nothing about what I said then that was in any way related to whether he was going to return as an activist or not. Can we talk about the activism? So he has now partnered with Ike Perlmutter, who used to work with you. You bought Marvel from him. What do you make of that? Do you think this is personal? Do you think that this is what is this? Um, this is not a headline. <laughs> uh, this is this is good on Iger to just flat out state that he does not want to uh, bring up this uh, this concept here. He has said in press releases that uh, Ike Perlmutter was fired. But of course, at the time, they just said that they laid him off until Perlmutter came out and said, uh, no, I was fired. I was not laid off. I was fired. Because right. they hate All other things being equal. Is that the fakest smile you've ever seen in your life? <laughs> it's the, uh, it, it's he, the most eagerly, isn't it? He, he looks like one of Jack Skellington's jack o' lanterns. Never, never smile at a crocodile. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Well said. Well stated. Well stated. That I'm going to create right now. Um, Did you hear that? The audience basically went ooh. Uh, the board has an obligation to listen to investors, but not Rich Greenfield. Um, Ike with Nelson represent a certain amount of shares of our stock. I'm certain that the board will hear them out in terms of what their plans or what their ideas are. That's uh, obviously okay, I'll ask a culture question. Do. I, I got, as, yeah. as you reminded me in the audience, I have a lot to do. I'm not going to get distracted by any of that in discussing with the board how to best contend with activists. The one thing that is very, very clear that I have actually requested is fine we, we have to obviously um contend with them right. in some form but don't force me to take my eye off the ball and lose focus in terms of managing if, the company if they get on the board. don't distract me from telling me that i'm wrong or does that affect you and your ability to I'm, keep your eye on the ball meaning I'm, is that a is it culturally people I are don't. always trying to figure out just let somebody on the board because maybe that shuts them up or if you let them on the board it infects the whole thing what do you think Here's what I think. The Disney board, if you if you look into a person, is a collection of very talented, very experienced people that know a lot about business and the world that bring to our boardroom a level of expertise and an input and an ability to basically either challenge me on some of my thinking and my decisions. OK, does anyone want to respond to that specifically? He's just stated that uh, everyone on the board is challenging Bob Iger on his decisions and uh, offers a wealth of advice. All of, those, all of those handpicked people that I put on the board are exactly. challenging. Yeah, I, I doubt that's true. He also basically said that uh, Nelson Peltz doesn't know anything about anything, so it's a wonder he accumulated those billions of dollars. The only the only person that's ever given him any pushback at all is Susan Arnold, and now she's gone. And she's gone. <laughs> what are you talking about? I mean, this is ridiculous. Yeah, she, she made the fatal mistake of uh, replacing Bob Iger, uh, stepping into a former role, and uh, she exited around the time that uh, Bob Iger officially came back. Yep. Um, so I'll, I'll point out uh, here that the accusation against Ike Perlmutter was, and sorry, against Nelson Peltz, uh, was that he has no media experience. And uh, and so the next person that they brought in was uh, Michael Froman, uh, not to be confused with uh, J.P. Groman that uh, just uh, <laughs> came in. Yeah, uh, he didn't have media experience. No one on the board has media experience except for uh, Bob Iger, except for the fact that they've just added Sir Jeremy Derrick from uh, from Sky Television. Finally, they have someone with media experience on the board other than Bob Iger. So, uh, so, so the big question is if Peltz has no media experience or knowledge, what, he was stupid to buy your stock? I guess he should sell it. That's a that's an interesting point. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, he was he was smart enough to say this is worth buying. Isn't that a good thing? 
Uh, yeah. <sighs> Again, going back to this idea that we've talked about with Ankara and 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 Pelts, they all see potential. These activist investors see potential here that they don't think that Bob Iger is unlocking. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and and they just worse than not is... unlocking that he's that he's uh, deteriorating that he's de diluting. Yes, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, there's so much potential for the Walt Disney Company. You can just see it in the IPs that they have. I mean, they have Marvel, they have Lucasfilm, they have these story Disney princesses. And what are they doing with them? They're flushing uh, yeah, them down the drain. Yeah, yeah, when we when we talk about all these so-called franchises, I'm sorry, but Marvel and and Pixar and all the re Lucas, they're not the biggest franchise in the history of the movies. Disney is. Yeah, yeah. Disney yeah, is in and of itself. The longest yes. running and the strongest and the most trusted until this guy threw all that away. Well stated. Vash, did you have something there? Yeah, no, I, I mean, it's just it's the historic franchises that they can leverage in their parks, which, by the way, some of these activist investors see them alone doing, what, $120 um, per share, accounting for uh, market value there? Uh, I mean, yeah, right, right now they're at 92, which is down from the historic highs that they had under uh, – uh, Bob Chapek, uh, right. of all people, people saw strength in the company when Bob Chapek was there, which is a is a fascinating thing. Whether or not they were correct, uh, I guess time will tell. So, or support me, or actually help me execute when when possible, and give me advice. And there's a qualification level that is required to sit on the Disney board. That's a uh, no comment. <laughs> And the board will make the, the not me. The board makes decisions about who's qualified and who isn't qualified to be on the board. And if no, actually, no, the shareholders make decisions about who is qualified yeah, to be on the board. Yeah, I have to yeah, offer yeah. that point uh, there. To officially request the board seat, I'm sure the board will go through a process to determine whether he is, or whether he should have a role on the board or not. But it's not like we've got. Sure, a number of empty seats. Come on in. Join. Actually, they did eliminate a board seat in order to make sure that Nelson Pelt didn't say, "Give me that one that Susan Arnold just uh, vacated." Yep. Didn't they just add two more board. members too? Uh, yeah, they like just that. added two. One. So yeah. at the moment, it went from eleven to twelve, and sorry, eleven to thirteen. And when right, right. Uh, D'Souza exits, it'll go back down to twelve. So. Uh, they're fine creating a board seat. So this is uh, this is an amazing statement from Iger right here that, oh, we don't have a ton of board seats, but they'll create one as is convenient for them. Also, uh, they they have played ball with activist investors in the past. Dan Loeb from Third Point has uh, his person. I want to say her name is Everson, uh, is a board member of the Disney company. So they they have even while uh, Nelson Peltz was and and Perlmutter was campaigning with him uh, to get a board seat. Uh, they did give one to Third Point and that 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 board member is up for uh, re-election uh, this this coming year, I'm sure. Well, not I don't think we can understand that. A lot. <laughs> I don't think we can understate how much Perlmutter's involvement in this is. I mean, he's seen the company from the inside. He's made public statements about how they were overspending. And that's right. one of the, he says that's the main reason why he was fired is because he was trying to stop them from just blowing all kinds of cash with the Marvel movies and, and, and bring that he, down. So he don't that. And by the right. way, He's he's he doesn't think Peltz is qualified because he has no media experience, but he also doesn't think Perlmutter, who had who built the whole thing called Marvel that he bought, isn't qualified no. either. No, uh, that you can't have it both ways, Bob. How in the world have we not uh, broached that subject? Obviously, Ike Perlmutter <laughs> has media experience because him and Alan Fine uh, built Marvel Studios into what it is today. Exactly, uh, or what it I, was. Well, uh, very, very well stated. Thank you for tuning in. Of course, we release videos every single day here on That Park Place, including a daily breakdown every weekday at 11, going through entertainment, streaming, and sometimes video games. In our next Breaking Bob, we'll be talking about Bob Iger's response to being confronted with the accusation of wokeness at the Walt Disney Company. Surprisingly enough, Iger agreed, but then he tries to pull one over on the audience by changing the definition of the word woke altogether. You won't want to miss our analysis. Consider subscribing to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media accounts.